Hi, hello, hey, and welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by Mr. David Rushed Vibes Rushing. And today we are here to rush the vibe with our tribe. Happy Pride Month to everybody. Happy Pride Month. So I got my... Or Juneteenth month for the blacks of us. Representation matters. Absolutely. Um, yes, Juneteenth month. Happy month containing Juneteenth as well. Um, which also falls on Father's Day this year. So knock out two holidays with one out, stone. Shout out to all the black dads out there. You should be double, double pampered. The good on black your, dads. On your, well, every, every black dad. The good black dads. What's a good dad? One who shows up, one who's there, one who's present, one who's involved in his children's lives, who does good things. Why are we going to shout out just dudes? Because they're dads. What? No, they're sperm donors. <laughs> no. They volunteered. They're more like, you know, like the, the frontline men in, in war who go out first, like, and die. Like, that's what they are. Non-good dads. So we're not even going to give them an opportunity to just to have no. growth and get better. We once, just, once, we just kill them. Once they're okay. non-good, they're just non-good. Non-good. And I'm referring um, to their sperm as the ones that are on the front line that just go like, rawr. Okay. Interesting. I'm I'm cur- I'm interested as to why you're defending bad dads. Because <laughs> I, I wouldn't defend good moms. Because like, good and bad are totally subjective. I feel like people know when they're it does, bad dads. It's not good Father's Day. It's just Father's Day. It's not good Mother's Day. It's just Mother's Day. No. So to celebrate, if someone's just, not a good mother, I'm not gonna. Keep, I'm not gonna wish them happy. But how do you Day. know what to? How do you know who's a good mom and who's a bad mom? You know. How. By their presence in their children's lives. What their partner says about them. Wow. <laughs> or lack Again, thereof. Subjective. It can be, but I feel like you can gauge when someone is a good father or a good mother. I don't know, man. See, here we already have a, a, a woman. Next, a woman. Or you have week a woman. Sure can say all dads matter. A woman already trying to taint Father's Day. It happens every year on Twitter. You got your single moms. You got to come out well, here and I you say that I don't condone. <laughs> you I've got your single been moms and be that. like, "Happy Father's Day to me," because my deadbeat ain't. Yeah, no, that I don't condone. Because I'm just like, yeah. no, you're a mom and you have Mother's Day and you deserve your accolades and your flowers for Mother's Day. You don't need to also claim Father's Day. Yes, you might be taking on the role of two parents to an extent, but. There are just some things, in my opinion, my opinionated truth, a father can only pour into their child. So that's why there's Father's Day like and there's Mother's Day. Uh, just overall being a good example in terms of if you're the father of sons, teaching your sons how to treat a part, their, part, their spouse, their woman, women in their lives, women in general, um, showing them how to show up, how to be a man um you know what the expectation of and and i know this is you know gender roles kind of vary in Mm -hmm. in our modern day society but you know just teaching your son or daughter what the standard i guess of a good man should be so whether that be providing for a family assisting in providing for a family you know having just being overall disciplined a good steward of you know just life money keeping a roof over their head being a support system someone they can come to um an ear to listen to i think it's very important for kids to be able to lean on their dads that a lot of that goes to moms but i do think that it's very important that fathers have open door policies where their kids are comfortable. Um, but just showing them like, I'm a man, this is what I do. This is what I get done. This is what I does. This is what I'm about. 
I'm here for you. I'm present in your life. Something pops off. I got you. Mm. You know why? Because I went in on half of you. So I think that's important. Presence for a father is important. And the same goes for moms. Like it's important that children have good female examples in their lives so that they can know, you know, if they're a female, how to treat and how to be treated. Like that's that's really, really important. Um that's just again, that's just my opinionated truth. I think two parent households are important. I know we go and I don't even know how this segue is coming, but I've heard, you know, a lot of people just, especially women, um, you know, I can do it on my own. I don't need a man and all of that. And again, that's your prerogative. Um, if that, if you feel that you've got the village and the support system, because even in a two parent household, you still need an entire village to raise a child. But I have found that at least in my experience, a lot of people long for desire wish they had had a two-parent household so even though like you may have an independent mother or father who was able to raise you on your own you might still something about the structure that structure of a that traditional structure of a two-parent household does a lot for a kid um and that's why when you know divorces happen and kids are separated from like having to live in multiple households, you see that that breaking in them. So it's really important to create an environment that kids feel conducive. But I've never been one. Again, this is my opinionated truth, and I feel like I need to keep saying that because people we live in a society where people are very easily offended, as opposed to actually taking the time to hearing what someone whether is you saying. Say, whether you say it's your opinion, you're still going to be offended. But I'm letting you know this is my opinion based off of my upbringing, based off of the social structure that I've been surrounded by, the friends that I've had, the people I've known. Something about you know, I've always had friends who have told me that they envy the fact that I had both parents in my household um that my dad came to things that my mom came to things that they both came to things so as much as one parent can try and pour in everything they have into their child the second makes a difference um that uh, additional support system so that's that's a long i don't even know how we got here um but that's just a long-winded opinion in terms of like the importance of both male and female parental figures showing up and being present in my opinion hmm. interesting but we all know i'm a traditionalist um i'm a traditionalist i'm low-key when it comes to man men thing things of the male species i'm very sexist you know, i was just pointing out the irony you know straight representation <laughs> i say that because Last year, when I was doing social media for um, one of my clients, when July, when June came and it was like we had cake, they had a, they had cakes. You could buy slices, like rainbow rainbow slices. You could buy the full cake, and people were like, "Well, what about a straight Pride Month?" If you knew how many, like I had to sit through so many like training sessions on how to res properly respond per PR straight month straight pride and it was just like y'all every month is straight pride like there's no need to have like like we, we're straight like we're here um so that's right. that was just me being funny but no, yeah. I, I get it nice i'm yeah. trying not to talk too much because you made a lot of interesting comments about me talking a lot last episode did i or did i just say you, you had a little jab. Jessica Vibes featuring David. I mean, hey, it's like I said, if you got the hot hand, you got to ride the hot hand. So you had a lot to talk about. Um, it's a nice shirt. Thanks. Sweatshirt. How do you like it to see it? I can't. Sorry. I'm like trying. Trust black women. And why did you feel the need to purchase that piece of apparel? Because I'm a nuclear black woman. 
<laughs> you feel like black women aren't trusted? Uh, I feel like trust is the way I'm defining trust. It's more so I feel like we're not recognized for all of the greatness for which we bring to society. Trust us. Because we know it. Okay. Cool. Who makes it? Oh, no, 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 no. DC. Oh, it's like district city clothing, I think. I think it's district city. Because I'm, I, I, yeah, district city. That's what it is. So go find them. I'm assuming they're out of DC. They shipped really quickly. Um, and I thought I thought this was going to be too big, and I would have to give it to you, but it it works. I think it, I think a wash will will make it comfortable. But sometimes you want like a little space in your pullover. Is this a pullover or a sweater? It's a sweater. Either way, it's good. Good. It's good stuff. It's nice. Yeah. Trust me. I've noticed you've had quite a few pieces of apparel come in this yeah. week from black owned companies because it's what we do here. Even rush vibes. I still have a lot of Target black theme. I mean, there's nothing wrong with buying mainstream name brand stuff or buying from, you know, large retailers. It's just, you know, putting, making an effort to help those brands, um, smaller brands who without the rise of social media and, and things like that normally wouldn't have an opportunity mm -hmm. to, uh, to get in front of eyes or whatever. So, um, but just know Tabitha Brown's line with Target drops in three days. And I will be Tabitha Browning all of it. Everything under $44. It's not a plug, but Target wants to. Uh, Sounds very pluggy. If Target wants to give a sponsorship check, I will receive it. They won't. You never know. They We have the same. They used our song in, their, in <laughs> one of their commercials. So I feel like there's that is, a partnership. That is true. That's just a sign of things to come. It's a partnership. Target vibes. You know, it was so funny. Um, because I had heard the song, obviously. Um, probably, it was probably at least two, three months before we actually launched the podcast. And it may have even been before that. Um, and uh I was like, yo, man, this would be really fire for the for the podcast intro. And this is before for a podcast intro, and this is before I ever knew that it would be a podcast. And um it's just really catchy. Like mm -hmm. anyone who who listens to the intro and the outro, who listens to the podcast regularly, they're like, Oh man, I love the music, I love the song. And um I swear we were out maybe we, we had launched a podcast maybe like a month or two months and then Target started running the mm -hmm. using the uh the track in there. And everyone was like and I think, and sharing I, it on IG and like Target's using your song. I was yeah. like, Yeah, come on. Yeah. But no, we did not get paid for it. Because it's not we don't own the rights to it. We a friend let us we use probably inspired a friend it. let us use his version of it um for for the free. Uh because he's he's good people. Um, but it's very, yeah, I feel I, like I, every kid of ours, um, I enjoy it. Does the do, 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 do. Yeah. And I caught our oldest trying to watch old episodes and I had to tell her to stop because mm, daddy has a potty mouth. Uh, you were talking about a pastor's dick being on the internet in one episode. So I don't, Did I don't want to say that. Yeah. Word? You said, you said you got your dick on the internet verbatim. Oh. But that, that's but but, but the, it, speaking of dicks on the internet. No. So, did you know John Gray got caught having another affair? But this one, this one takes the cake. This wait, one, wait, wait. This is an he, emotional affair. Yeah. What is what's an emotional affair? When you are emotionally affairing with someone what that's that, not your what partner. Would, what would that look like? When you are confiding in someone, having, I assume, having in-depth conversation, things that you should be conversing with your life partner with, with somebody outside of your relationship. So if I have a therapist, am I, if you, am I having an emotional affair with my therapist? If, if I tell them about my... If you line, you can. You, can, is, cross, you can cross the professional line. I feel like you, people know when they're crossing the line. 
You know when you're getting too but therapy, close. But the conversation with therapists is supposed to be privileged. It's supposed to be it confidential. Is. It is. But, I mean, if this person is who, like, you're not texting your therapist. You're not, you know, engaging them. I might, with telehealth. I might. Telehealth, you just have a scheduled Zoom so that they can make sure they get you paid. You never know. But this last one, he was having, it was with a virtual masseuse, which, it's, don't try and figure it out. Um, and I guess <laughs> she's got video of him whacking off, taking his meat to the chop block. So he was just masturbating to, I think she was guiding him. Okay. So and he, he like promised to move her to Atlanta, buy her cars. So house. she could watch him in person. I guess so. <laughs> but yeah. This is like, at least to my knowledge, the third time he has had an affair and been caught. Um, I don't know why. I don't. I. I just don't. I don't. I don't understand. I. I have thoughts. Towards understand what? It all like get help. Like you. You're clearly a serial affairist. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Anyway, he clearly has a problem because he keeps having these affairs. Um, I feel for his wife and his two kids. Uh, I know that there was like an, an alleged inst- instance where he was talking about suicide, which is very, very serious. And if anyone is having suicidal ideations, please seek help. Uh, but he keeps doing this. And he's a pastor. And Mm -hmm. I, for one, have never been one to have this mindset that pastors are supposed to be these perfect human beings. They're still human. Yes, they have a role that requires them to depict a a particular lifestyle. But I'm not ignorant of the fact that they're human. And we all, all as human, have vices and have weaknesses. Like, we can go through the Bible. Every single great man in the Bible had some kind of weakness, had some kind of flaw, and acted on it. So... I do put that little asterisk, not excusing an affair, but just acknowledging that like we are human. Um, I'm torn because part of it's, it's not part of it. It's none of my business, but I'm also like, what? Here we are. Here we are. Um, But I'm also like, why would you keep doing that to yourself? to your wife and to your kids why like what's the gain what is the gain what's why and then also to his wife like why why tolerate it why continue like where where is and i recognize there are some people who they're the way they are built in a Christian perspective and for marriages, like, you know, you just deal with it, like super old school, all of that stuff. I recognize that. It's also 2022, you know, women aren't fully dependent on their man. Like they're capable of surviving on their own, raising their kids to our previous point. Um, or I would actually, that would actually, that actually counter your previous point, but continue. So, I guess I just don't understand why I tolerate this. So I'm, I'm, I'm torn. Like I'm, I'm cause you want a fair. Okay. N- don't get no ideas. <laughs> okay. I'm, speaking, I'm speaking about other people's <laughs> like, marriages. Okay, baby, it was just one. I'm you speaking, said, you I'm said, okay. Speaking to other people's marriages. No, y'all want heard it. Fair, Rush by I, y'all, by try, y'all heard it. Jessica said she can, y'all hear she, can, saying she, can she can get fair. past an affair she can no, understand no, so not, if i happen to accidentally have an emotional affair with somebody jessica should be able to get past it per her words continue yeah i'll get past it when i walk by your grave anyway i get it one time like one but you're on time three that society knows about which means that there's probably a sprinkling of at least four other times so either you don't need to be married don't want to be married you want your cake and eat it too either way it's selfish has anyone ever spoken to uh mrs gray has she 
expressed publicly how she feels about these um, entanglements that her husband we'll has has, fall, has we'll fallen into. Entanglement. Like, because maybe she doesn't mind. Maybe she no, allows him she to. she minds. Because every time he apologizes, he makes it very clear that he's embarrassed her and that he's going to be better. And if he if she didn't mind, he wouldn't have bought her that Lambo truck. You know, just buy someone a Lambo truck if what you did was okay. Lamborghini makes trucks. They do, and he bought her one. Oh, I don't know. I after not her last affair, after his last affair in 2018. So, no, they don't have an open marriage. Every time he does make his public apologies, he makes it very. She clear. must have one hell of a prenup. <laughs> she must, but I feel like part of their minister, ministerial brand is built on her. Yeah. So, again, I don't really know. The only reason why I know... Or not a prenup. Excuse me. They must not have a prenup or something because the way he acted. And then buying actually, stuff. They must have a prenup. Oh, yeah. Maybe they must. Yes, right. I'm sorry. Must because have, he's, have he's not acting like someone who has anything to lose. Um, yeah. So, the only real affiliation I have with him, I, I think black back when Black Lives Matter was really like it... Um, Pastor Furtick from Elevation had brought had him on and he came up from South Carolina. I remember that. And he and I don't really even remember what he said. I feel like he said like the political stuff that, you know, past like the politically correct stuff that a pastor says regarding Black Lives Matter. Like what? I don't remember. It was like two years ago. But what it was the politically correct Just stuff? Like, we're all created by the same God and Jesus loves you and I'm black, yes, and you're white and we can get along. See us sitting on this stage together. Let's pray. Um, as opposed to actually like addressing head on. These are the issues. I could be mistaken. Again, this was like two years ago. Um, so that's why I like know his name. And then I think Tasha Cobbs sings at his church. Like, I think that's where she's based out of now. But I don't know him. Apparently, like, they had a TV show on OWN and all of this fun stuff. But they're they're pretty public figures, which is why every time he has an affair and it comes out, we find out. Because they're significant enough in pop culture, in Christian pop culture, if that's not an oxymoron, to be known. So I don't really know where I'm getting at. I just find it interesting um, um. that, you know... You know, he apologizes. Baby, I'm a, I was wrong. I'm going to do better. I'm going to be a better man. I'm going to be the man you deserve. You deserve better than me. So I'm going to be better than me. And then you still go, you know, playing whack-a-mole on the internet with a virtual masseuse. And what industry is that? I feel like masseusing requires... Hello. <laughs> requires touch. Some industries you just can't go virtual. That's like a virtual surgeon. What? You know, I think my tattoo is finally starting to peel. It is. It was inevitable. It only took four weeks. Has it been four weeks or three? Three. Um. Yeah, I mean that's that's some. I guess it's unfortunate for the Gray family and uh, the congregation at whatever church he pastors over you said um that you're torn or that it's bothering you or something is it is it the fact that he's a pastor and continues to fall into this this pattern or is it just because he's a notable figure and you keep hearing about him being unfaithful to his wife be it emotionally or physically it could be a culmination of both i think one why does he still have a congregation like why why are people still going to this church knowing I, I again I don't listen I haven't listened to well, a sermon, I mean but that's so. that's like why would a pastor continue to preach to someone who is battling addiction that's like the same but that's from the pulpit to the congregation it doesn't matter we're all the, men we're all humans and we're, we're all, not all having affairs three times no over. but I'm saying we're all humans in that we can all face demons and monsters and lose repetitively until we if we ever conquer them so him like it shouldn't make a difference whether he's a pastor or not if we're to say that acknowledge the fact that he's human and as humans we all screw up sometimes repetitively then if 25 percent of the time 
his congregation has to deal with this, but the other 75, they're getting good stuff from him. Well, you know, as, as using him, God using him as a conduit to deliver his message. What's wrong with that? I guess to me, it seems as if the congregation and the church itself is condoning this act. And I know church, the church structure is very, a well, lot of large churches are very business-like in their well, structure. Well, one, it's, though it's public, it's a private matter. It's between him and his wife. Mm-hmm. So, But you're a public figure. Well, there's plenty of public figures, and we don't know what's going on in their lives. Because they don't have virtual masseuse who it's still, it. It's though the, it may be public knowledge, it should still be respected as a private matter between him and his wife and his masseuse. I guess I just feel like it's... This is something where I'm not saying he should step down, but you need some, you need, you need to work. Mm, how do we know he's not working? Because he keeps having affairs. Progress is a slow process sometimes. You don't always go from here to here. Sometimes you. And sometimes you're just a serial affairist and maybe shouldn't be leading a flock. I mean, maybe he's battling addiction. Maybe he's addicted to sex or porn or whatever. Whatever is getting his his dopamine going, like maybe it's an addiction he has to battle. I don't know. I don't particularly care, and I don't follow this. He's not someone who I follow. I most of the time when I hear about whatever he's caught up in, it's because you've told me. But I said we all got demons. We all got things we're battling and struggling with. Things that we could be better about. His just happens to be may happen to be. What he's been getting of me for having affairs. But if this was a female led church, this would not be tolerated. Why would it not be tolerated? People don't tolerate women having affairs. Like society has made it acceptable that like this is just like the way sex is depicted in society, it's it's a masculine thing. And women are now like fighting to make it like, hey, we're fifty percent of this process too. So there are certain things that a man can do on a regular basis. And it's just like, I mean, just those old statements, oh, boys being boys, guys being guys, men being men. If the, So certain sexual acts, i.e. affairs, are not tolerated by women. Whether, so if she had done this, she would be scrutinized. Like they'd be like, oh, she needs to go. But because he is the pastor of the church, he is having the affair. It is more culturally acceptable than if it were vice versa. I mean, maybe, I don't know. I can't speak for the entire society, but I know for me, I treat it no differently. You say that because you're not in the predicament where. I'm not in the predicament. What are you talking judge, about? You would have to judge a woman who has had an affair. Everybody cheats. What? <laughs> Every, everybody, men and women cheat. Like, it's not. Men aren't more susceptible yeah, to cheating women than women. Judged, women are held. I'm talking about for my my person. Me, I feel like you say that. Me as David redacted rushing. I don't. It doesn't matter to me whether it's a man or or a woman cheating. Like I would have the same perspective. I would look at the situation. Like this is somebody who has cheated repeatedly, and it's and you. There's like one of two things, right? Like just speaking to Pastor Gray, like either it's something he truly has an issue, like a problem with, like a true like addiction, which is a sickness. Addiction is is a sickness, a disease. Or he knows that, like you said, because of who he is, his stature, his 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 uh, his. Uh, the fact that he's you know has such a, a sizable congregation that he can just do it, act like he's sorry, wait a little bit, and then he can do it again because he will continue to get away with it. It's like it's got to be like one of those two things. Mm-hmm. Um, but it seems most people jump to the latter and not the former, so it could just be something that he's struggling with. But I would I would look at it. I would give each situation an objective like look at it objectively. Like is could it is it possible that something else is going on? But if not, it could just be that he just like to get around, and it would be the same for a woman. Like 
I don't know. I guess as as I'm getting older, like when I when I was growing up, I would just think like, oh, man, oh, you you made vows. You got to be with this person for life, and you got to be completely 100 percent satisfied. And you can never you can never have a thought about somebody else or find somebody else attractive. Or but if you if you uh, have have wandering eyes, that must mean that there's there's 100 percent the problem is with your partner and not you. And it's just not that simple. Like, it's just not. Like, there are so many different things that affect a, just a person on a day-to-day basis, especially in our lifetime, like within the last couple of years, let alone affect the person and how it relates to their, and how, and, and that have, how it affects that person and how it affects that person's relationship. So, you know, I don't know. It could be, it may not have nothing to do with his wife. It could be 100% about John and something that John's got to work out. And if it, the roles were reversed, it could be something that, what's his wife's name? I don't because I don't. Aventa. Aventa. It could be something that Aventa has to work out. And, or Aventa. Mrs. Gray. Sorry. Or maybe Aventi. I don't I could know. be saying Aventi because of Starbucks. <laughs> I don't follow them. I think it's Aventa. But, you know, I don't know. It's just. Avenue. You know, I would I would hope society would give everybody a fair shake when it comes to um, reactions to when people, notable people, are found to have been unfaithful. But all I can do is speak for me, and you know that's just how I feel about it. Mm. Do you know who Tasha K is? Because apparently she's the one who's be, been leaking this. I do not know who Tasha K is. I guess she's like the internet scandal person. But anyway. That's what I got. I just found it interesting that yet again he had another affair, um, and I felt for his wife. And I hope no one is like putting anything on her because he clearly has an issue that needs to be resolved and needs to be needs to be taken care of. Yeah, I mean, if you know, if he's battling some, you know, I hope I hope he can get the help he needs. Uh, and I hope, I hope everybody involved, his wife especially, you know. Um, yeah, and those kids. And the kids. Because he has a son, and this goes back to the importance of being a good male figure for your kids. Because he's teaching his he he's teaching his daughter that this is okay. It's okay for a man to treat you this way, and he's also teaching his son that it's okay for you to treat a a woman this way. But I don't. But depending on your perspective, you could, one could also argue that there, his wife is teaching her daughter that I, it's okay to tolerate this from a man, and teaching her son that a woman will take this from you. I don't want. I don't one hundred percent agree with what you're saying. I don't one hundred percent disagree either. So I'm somewhere sixty forty. More like seventy so, thirty. Seventy thirty agree. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't think it's that black and white. I really don't. I'm not saying it's black and white. Like I'm it's, saying it's it's no. You said like he's teaching his son or he's teaching his daughter. Like it's not not intentionally, but by default, because little eyes are watching. Yeah, but we don't know. Like how else he impacts them? Like positively. I'm sure he he does. Yeah, I'm like not so, so that. So it's. But, Think but, about this, like whenever we are, have you ever noticed how like the girls will tear you to shreds when like when they get like real daddy, you know, and that's because granted, I'm not like yelling at you on a regular basis, but they look, not. I'm not, but they look to me and they see that it's OK to stick up and defend yourself. So they're defending themselves to you. That's something that I am intentional about teaching them. So they know that they essentially don't have to take BS from some dude. Well, that wouldn't apply because I wouldn't be. BS is not what I do. On most days. Um, so All I do is just express my feelings. If my <laughs> feelings are, are BS, then okay, then maybe that's what I that's what I so dabble in. The, but po- the point that I'm trying I'm to sorry. make is even at this young age, they're already like they they know to use their voice. They know to to speak up. And I don't know how much attention you pay, but like 
I'm very big about them being decisive, making decisions, speaking what they want. Um, and yeah, you still never know what you want to eat. It's amazing how that's that happens. because I'm indecisive, but I'm trying <laughs> not to raise indecisive young women. So, so I'm so saying, to your point, you're teaching your children that it's okay to say one thing and do another, or do one no. thing and say another, because that's what you're doing. Part you yourself are indecisive. You yourself are indecisive. I don't I I know how picky you are. So, oh, so I try is, to make decisions that okay. will benefit you. So maybe I'm just self-sacrificing, overly self-sacrificing. Yes, our savior. Thank you. Do not. Thank you for just Do not. continuously falling on swords and making yourself smaller so that others can be bigger. I appreciate that. I don't know how you do it. I'm done. Um, no, I think, uh, I don't know. I just didn't like, I, I couldn't get down with the, the framing because it was just like, because he does this thing because he may or may not be suffering from this thing that has him acting this way. He's teaching his kids that that's okay. And that's not necessarily a fact because like my dad struggled with things. My parents struggled with things. Um, and one can make the argument, like to take your argument, you could say that they were teaching me and my brothers that it was okay for them to be that way. When in reality, again, we all have, we all have weaknesses. Like we all got blind spots. So no, it's not teaching them that it's okay. It's teaching them that nobody's perfect, right? Like you go through life, you're going to have things that you struggle with. You're going to have things that you seemingly can't conquer or that you try to conquer and you continuously like fall down. And then eventually you may get, you may, you know, you may overcome it, but that's not like seeing my father's weaknesses weren't all that I took from my father. Like my father is more, way more, a hundred times more than whatever his weakest trait is. Mm -hmm. Um, and no, it's not as egregious as, what some would what some would perceive as as egregious as cheating on a spouse, but he's got weaknesses just like everybody else, and I was able to see those things as a kid, yes. But then, as I got older, understand that that wasn't the majority of his makeup in terms of his character, and you just I don't know. I guess you just as as you have to get to the point where you can understand that people are I think more than more times than not better than their weakest lowest points and weakest moments better than the worst thing that they've ever done I can't remember what the quote is but that's what I'm trying to get at like most people are better than the worst thing that they've done I get what you're saying I just yeah. think that you're overlooking how pow, how powerful how subconsciously powerful certain examples are like I grew up knowing that I didn't like how emotional, I'd say, my dad was. Hmm. But I married an emotional man. And you yourself are emotional. I am. But I married an emotional man. I didn't want an emotional man. Certain things are just almost a comfort. Because it's familiar. Not comfort. It's familiar. So even at a default you uh, you can attract those things so that's really i think in a grand scheme of things that's what i'm actually saying that okay maybe he's not blatantly like maybe this little boy's not blatantly saying like aha dad's treating mom like this i can go around and have virtual masseuse, masseuses too when i grow up but he might because this is the example of what he saw, one of two things can happen. He can fight really hard against it to be like, I saw what my dad did to my mom. I don't ever want to do that to a woman. Mm -hmm. Or he can go the other way and say, my dad did this to my mom. She stuck around. It's okay. Then you have like another generational transfer. Maybe there's a young lady out there whose dad or some who did something did the same to her mom so she was like oh this is okay she pairs up with this guy's son and now you have another generation where this passes through so i guess that's the perspective for which i see it from that's it okay 
But speaking of affairs, you know Nene from Real Housewives of Atlanta? Was it Nene or was it Nene? It's Nene. <laughs> it's a basketball player. Um, Nene. Uh, like, watch me. Yeah. But he doesn't play anymore. It was a while ago. So that's, that's why I always, when I see the Lene. name spelled that way, that's how I automatically pronounce it. I think it. her full name is like Lenini, Lenisha, Lenithia, something okay. like that. Anyway, so um, her husband died about six months ago. Mm-hmm. It's very sad. Um, big ordeal, obviously. Rest in peace. Yes. Um, so she's mo- since moved on, started dating. Turns out, the man, she's dating is married. And I guess is from North Carolina. So we're just having it. I, it that's a, just a, seems, a, a, I mean, a you're cheating, not really throwing cheating, a, cheating focus. You're not really throwing anything episode. in here. Okay. Um, so I'm just I'm just talking about the topics that are popping in my sure. head. Sure. Um, so I guess dude and his wife are from North Carolina. Wife, at least they're based here. North Carolina being one of like five states in the country where you can sue the person that your spouse is having an affair with for alienation of affection. So she's suing Nini for alienation of affection because she done stole her man and she's just flaunting it all over Instagram. And she's like, we were fine until Nini showed up. Who's what are your thoughts of alienation of affection and and being suing the person that your partner is having an affair with? Um, so like there's part of me that wants to just be like, it wouldn't be no big deal just because I know that would be the annoying thing to do. <laughs> You'd be like David, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's kind of messed up. You think about someone, well, I don't know. It's not, it's not like a linear, my, it's not a, I can't analyze it like in a linear fashion. Right. Cause most people would say, Oh, like, how dare you? come into some like mess up somebody's marriage right like take someone's man when they're legally married to them but again like i don't know maybe it was about dude and what he felt like he wanted to pursue then divorce your wife and let the divorce become complete or at least tell your girlfriend not to put it all over the instagrams I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's messed up. I mean, I would, I would hate if, uh, if like, if that were to happen to me, um, and we happen to live in North Carolina. So maybe it's some, thank you for telling me this so that I have it, I have it in my back pocket. Should, should this ever happen to me? I would sue. So if you go have an affair, Um, make sure she's rich. But yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, suing granted, these are famous or semi famous people we're talking about. So there could be uh financial uh advantage to this like assuming she can she can win her her case her lawsuit but i don't know i mean i think the fact that only a handful of states actually give you the ability to to take someone to court over this kind of speaks to the great pettiness of north carolina yeah and that's why i won't move that's crazy though I think um, it's an amazing thing. I, I think it's, I don't know. I'm torn about how I feel about it because I feel that, so if you have an affair, my gripe is with you. Right. Granted, if that, because per- it could be two things. Maybe that person doesn't know you're married. Maybe you're, you know, just playing off as a single dude who just travels a lot for work. So you only see them I whenever. I don't wear a wedding ring. You don't so. wear a wedding ring. Wedding band. So um, maybe, you know, you displayed that, hey, I'm available and they don't know. Single, or, single and ready to mingle. Or maybe they knew. Now, if they knew, I'm going to pull a chick's tracks out. Like, that's just, that's just how it is. But... My gripe is with you because you're the person I made vows with. You're the person who committed your life to me. You're the person that I built a home with, had children with, Mm -hmm. gone through stuff with. So a lot of stuff. stuff. Still going through stuff. So my issues with you because you're the one who stepped out. Mm -hmm. 
So I feel like I should be able to to sue you, but our money is the same. But I guess maybe that's why you sue the person that they're having the affair with, because it's like you can't sue the person you're married to because you're married and you all have the same assets. But if that person has assets, I'm going to take them down, too. It's petty. And petty is like when people are hurt, people do. People hurt. When you're hurt, you want to hurt. So I get it. I don't know all of the details of the relationship. I don't support, you know, being in a relationship with someone who's married. Even if they're separated, like, just get the signature on the paper. Like, y'all can talk. Be in the talking state. I don't know if couples, if people still do that. Back in the day, like, you were talking. Before you were officially dating, you were just talking. Like, y'all can talk. Just talk. So many stages. So many stages. And I don't even think, I haven't heard anyone use the term talking in a while, so I don't think that's a dating, a dating yeah, frame I felt, anymore. I felt like we used that in uh, Is that Netflix and chilling now? Like the talking stage? No, that's just... <laughs> so, <laughs> um, no, it's not It's not talking. It's just it's something else. A little bit more. It's the... Um, what's that, um, that season... Cuffing season is Netflix cuffing and season. chill the new cuffing season or cuffing season is still. I think a thing. Netflix and chill is a, is a is a is a sub is what happens during cuffing season. Okay, because I don't hear anyone talk about Netflix and chilling right now because it's summer. well because well, because they went they raised their their prices. People oh. ain't, yeah, people can't cancel them. So are they talking about nixing password sharing? People ain't messing with Netflix. Talk about the Hulu and chill and chill. No, people ain't doing people HBO just, Max and chill. No, HBO Max, look, HBO Max, um, surprisingly, it, I think is the top streaming uh, platform out there. Um, it's it's overwhelming, but they, they it is it the it could the UI could be better, but they I mean it's HBO right mm-hmm. like at the heart of it, so you know they're gonna have content content that slaps. But it, I was on there and I'm it's it's. The the same uh, effect I get when I open up Netflix, like I'm just like totally overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's on a much smaller scale. Yeah. But the difference is, is with Netflix, I'm totally overwhelmed. I have no idea what's good and what isn't. Right. Like you have, you'll know a couple things, right? Like Ozark and I think Stranger Things for people who watch that, and I guess a couple others. But like other than that, that's like maybe two percent of mm-hmm. everything that's on netflix so i have no idea what's good or what isn't but i know hbo i know that like 90 percent of what's out there on the oh, platform yeah. is is good um and i just don't know where to start because you know we don't really their content is over i would say netflix we don't really have time to, to for watch me stuff. netflix fails because there's so many things that i'm like i'm not ready to dig into it just yet i'm not pressed to dig, dig into it just if it's not trending I'm not pressed to dig into it. Like I, we haven't really pushed into Stranger Things. We haven't really pushed into Ozarks. Both of those shows we've started. Um, I think me personally, if they were like more black people, I'd probably push more, um, just because of my alliance to the black. So the black. That's my new. Fr- yeah, that's my new phrase. Um, so don't tr- don't s- trust black women. Just trust the black. Just <laughs> trust the black women and the black um but hbo like their content is not to me it's not overwhelming so i was watching that one um the gilded age and really because one of the storylines was a black woman um and and i think next season she's really gonna have a big role or significant role but yeah you can kind of just hop into it like i watched um and just like that, which is the spinoff from Sex and the City, which mm. I thought I would never watch because I wasn't a fan of the lack of diversity of Sex and the City, especially since the show itself took place in one of the most diverse cities in the world. So, so New York. Oh. Oh, you have no experience with Sex and the City. Just that, uh, what's her name? Sarah. Sarah Jessica Parker. Yeah, that she was in that joint. Yeah. That's it. So it takes place in New York. And oh. she's... A writer and her income doesn't make sense like she's got money and she's like she writes one book every 10 years um i mean if you got the right and i think she's the like, right deal you can, you can live I, I think she had like a, a little blurb in a uh, magazine again i didn't watch sex in the city because 
I think my mom watched it, but I always said I wasn't going to watch it because there wasn't any representation. I think Blair Underwood was like the only black male. Blair actor. was on there. Yes, for like mm, Blair be on there. Blair show up in the most random, <laughs> random stuff. I'm like, is that, Blair, is that Blair Underwood? I still can't decide my feelings on Blair Underwood. Um, my mom don't like him. She doesn't. I can nah. see your mom not liking Blair. Underwood. I mean, she'll tolerate him, but she. Yeah, she always be like, like she's like he ain't, he ain't Denzel. I feel like he is great value to Morris Chestnut. Wait, oh, <laughs> wait a minute. Like, if wait a minute. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Let's not make it. Let's not act like Morris Chestnut is like no, on some pedestal. But Morris Chestnut no. is like like Morris is Chestnut like ragu to Denzel's Prego. Did you call Blair Underwood Morris Chestnut? <laughs> Great, va- great value, Morris Chestnut. No, but wow. I mean, there's a hierarchy. Wow. There's a hierarchy. Wow. <laughs> I, okay. Because I would call, I would call. You would call. Don't tell me you would call Morris great to Morris. Morris Chestnut, it, and I don't understand the. Because Morris Ch- I don't Chestnut understand it. is like the epitome of the chocolate man. He is. He is essential when you look at. Um, the history of black cinema, especially through like the nineties. Yes, he's essential, but he's not like he's not. To, I just don't. I, I don't get it with Morris Chestnut. A lot he, of people, but he's he's. I just don't. From I'm complexion sorry. wise, he is consistently chocolate. Just because he's a dark skinned dude. Yes, and it's you it's, say <laughs> you say it like people got the ability to just change their complexion no, depending upon like the role they in a, in a world where it's like where you have your Michael Ely's light skinned blue eyes, loose wave curly hair. Morris Chestnut stands out. Dude's name it's, is Chestnut. Just because he's black. Yes, blue but black. He, but he's not like little black like um, your boy. What's his name? I don't know. The little one from his wife was the voice of Elsa. Oh, why is his name? He was also in the movie with Morris Chestnut. He was also the best man holiday. Oh, Tay. Yes. He's not a Tay. You can call Tay little and he's probably like he, Tay's bigger than you. you can call him little. Okay. So disrespect I'm five, Tay, like, six. So, disrespect little, Tay so like bigger that. than me is really not that much. Um, he could be like five, six and a quarter. So I feel like Tay Diggs doesn't really appeal to women. Doesn't appeal to just overall the culture. I can't believe you trying to make it Chestnut. seem like Morris Chestnut is some superior talent that Over Blair, Blair that Blair they're they're like on the same if you're if no, we were to make a pyramid no. of No, if we were to no thirty second time. If we were to make a pyramid Mm-mm. of just talent. No. Of black male actors no. in Hollywood, Blair Underwood and Morris Chestnut would be on the same level. They would absolutely they would, not. They would absolutely be on the same level. Absolutely I don't not. understand. I just, I just don't. And this is 100%. You call it bias, whatever, and I'll, I'll take it. But I don't understand how people keep trying to hype Morris Chestnut. Morris, I can't even name it's a movie not, that I've seen Blair Underwood in. And I've seen him in movies. He, oh, was, more, he was in um, Set It Off. He's definitely a, a small screen actor, but still... Morris Chestnut. I mean, so is Morris Chestnut. I'm not saying Morris Chestnut is like. I mean, he's oh. been a more he's been a more classic, uh, like, if it's like, like black pop, yeah. like black films. Obviously, Boys in the Hood, and then the Best Man, but um, or, or two that come to mind. But even with that, man, like, because when I think of Blair, I think of that last scene in Set It Off where she calls him. That's the only thing I think of. Think of him. I can't think of anything else. I'm sorry. You're not gonna. You're not gonna change my mind on this. I'm not. He's he's great. But he, they are both. They are amazing for the culture. You know, they are they so are both equally needed. They are, and this is and, I, and this is all love, right? <laughs> as I say, as I'm telling <laughs> that they're, that they're trash. Look, I love because they've made it. They've opened doors for so many people um, in the in the business. So this is all in, in good fun. But still, um, yeah. How did we get here? I don't know. But we're talking about HBO. Talking about HBO. 
But I still think Morris Chestnut is more superior. To no. Oh, because we were talking about Sex in the City, and I said Blair Underwood yeah. is the only black feature yeah, in that, Sex in the City. Yeah, no, nah, absolutely not. There, no, don't do that. Mm-mm. You really are going to put Blair Underwood over same the same tier. His name is literally under the same <laughs> name is the under. same tier. No, no, Morris Chestnut at least needs two or three steps above. No, absolutely not. He's higher on the pyramid. No, based on because he's dark skin. No, and he's big. <laughs> this is all you big. said. You said he's consistently <laughs> dark skin and he's big. This is your he's only not reason. Big. He's well maintained. Yeah, whatever. He's consistent with. And he with got his old. He got them big. He got big teeth. Does he? He got a mouthful of teeth. Who? They actually they're nice teeth. I like a full smile. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, you're not, you're not gonna give me. Anyway, anymore. HBO so it's, does. I mean, have, it's, so if we're if we're to, if we're to look at like, like, so who's the top? Come on, man! <laughs> you already know who's at the top. It's Denzel. Just go. Like you can't. It's just Denzel. Not Morgan Freeman. Denzel just. I feel like Morgan. Jessica. Did, Morgan is the voice of God. I'm about to cut all this stuff off. <laughs> if you ever Freeman ever in the, your life. Look, I love Morgan. You have to love Morgan, even and with he's, his little step granddaughter def- situation. He's definitely higher than than Morris Chestnut and Blair Underwood. Definitely, doesn't but he have an Academy Award? But do not, don't. Fine. Put him it in the same be, category it can as be Denzel. Denzel. Morgan. Oh, where do you put Sydney? Where do you put Will? Is Will allowed to be on your list? So Denzel, Denzel is at the apex, and then you got Sydney. There's no um, one who could be above Denzel. No. No one. No. No black male. No. I Not mean, who Harry. would you who would you put? I'm just thinking the classic Sydney Harry. He surpassed Sydney. Harry Belafonte. I mean, I don't really rock with Harry anyway. Exactly. Who else is black and male? There's a lot of black males walking around in Hollywood. Uh, but see, that's the point because it's not like there's there's just like this large talent pool of notable black male actors in Hollywood. So it should be a relatively small list. So you got Denzel. You can have Sydney and Harry and Morgan. And Morgan. Morgan's kind of Morgan's kind of a tweener between that that second rung and third. I would say. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Where would where would Michael B. Jordan go? All right. So I'm gonna say something real controversial. <laughs> <laughs> I don't he's not he's, he doesn't make the pyramid okay he's not I don't I'm not mad about that I'm not a I'm not a I'm not I, I, I respect Michael B wire right um all that stuff but I don't think he's that good of an actor I I'm not upset about that he's got a great physique oh yeah it's a good looking dude solid very solid he's got a nice mustache does he he can if okay. he shaves everything else off, but I don't. I just don't think he's that good of an actor. Okay. I think he's being. He's one of those like. You don't think he has potential? I think to he's. Advance? I think he's forced onto us. Now I love. I love Creed. Creed is good. But one can only get so far with Creed, yeah. with the same franchise. Yeah. But I mean, Sylvester Stallone. So, is she awake? No. Oh. He literally survived off of the same franchise, and then Cliffhanger. Um, yeah. Okay, so Michael B. Jordan's not in he's the not, pyramid. He's, he's not there, and, and David's pyramid, so he's he's not there. Okay, I mean he's all right. He's not like trash, but Who I don't else think would if, be on if, it because again we don't have a lot of options. Chadwick, rest in peace. Oh, Chadwick, of course. Chad. Um, Denzel's son, John. Forrest. John David. Forrest Whitaker. Okay, so Forrest See, is, is in that is in the upper he, tier. He's up. Yeah. Like right? Would you put him under Denzel? Like uh, right he's under in Denzel? that. He's in that Sydney Harry. Okay. Okay. Yeah, tier for sure. Um, this is J- sad. actually uh, Jamie Fox is up in that upper echelon too. I Jamie th- Fox is probably like the greatest underrated. He's the most underrated entertainer of like our lifetime so i think i Most have such lifetime. a struggle with jamie fox because you know i don't like like slapstick comedy i don't like stupid comedy so i'm tainted with jamie fox because one i grew up without we didn't have cable a lot of times so we had like the local channel and the jamie fox show was always on and i 
did not like him in the Jamie Foxx show. So it's been very hard for me to build a connection to Jamie Foxx because I still see him as the stupid comedian. And I know he's advanced so much. I mean, he's got, you know, unpredictable. Like, he's he's done stuff. He's got an Oscar. He's got an Oscar. Best he act, best he actor. raided out. He, he, he did the thing. But I still see him as Jamie Foxx from the Jamie Foxx show. It's unfortunate. It is. But that's part of that's part of his like that's part of but his that range. Just that's means part he's of he's not doing enough in his range. No, for that's me part to... that's part of his range, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's how he got that's I how he got have, in that's how he got into the business. But I now have more respect for Kevin Hart. Like he talked like he than talk- I do for J- after Kevin Hart and Wesley. I'm like, yo, Kevin Hart's gonna slash somebody. Like, I, <laughs> that's the most predictable Kevin Hart's Anyways. a killer. Um, so I assume yeah. he's not on your pyramid. <laughs> Kevin Hart? Nah, Wesley's on there though. Wesley's like lower on the lower I rungs. Don't have enough experience with Wesley outside of That's because you church folk. You can be watching all No, all the good I mean movies. my parents had that one movie he was in. Was it the vampire guy? <laughs> <laughs> or was it Slash? <laughs> Don't oh. laugh at me. You know I don't remember names of things. Um, you mean Blade? Blade, because that one saved the whole Marvel <laughs> universe. Slash. That movie saved the entire Marvel. I'm sure if your name is Blade, oh, you're slashing some things. Oh, my God. Um, that franchise saved the whole Marvel universe. Did you know that? The success of that movie is why I'm we a, have I'm aware. Marvel today in I'm its aware. current state. So, I'm aware. I mean, I respect Wesley. <laughs> <laughs> slash slash and the vampire what's the that's the boot that's the bootleg joint you find in the uh the random random dollar bit the dollar vamp- dollar didn't VHS. he play a vampire with eddie murphy uh and you gotta put eddie murphy on the list oh yeah absolutely eddie's up there eddie eddie has eddie has range eddie and jamie have range they do but i see eddie as an actor i see jamie i still see him on the jamie fox show Eddie Murphy has come a long way, and I have gripes with Eddie Murphy. They both have. Jamie Foxx was like doing stand up in like just random, so was random, random spots. Yeah, but whereas most people saw him as just some stup- some stupid comedy dude, and then you realize, oh, he's a talented musician. Oh, he's got range as an actor. Like. He's been quiet lately. Jamie Foxx is. I'm curious what he's working. He on. is. He's phenomenal. Like I, there are not a lot of people I stand for. Obviously, it's, it's a goat, Denzel, and then there's Will. Um, but yeah, Jamie Foxx is. He's that dude. So you brought up Will. Is he making a comeback? How long? What's your like? What is he? Your, hasn't, he hasn't. I don't think he's. I don't think he's left to, to need to make a comeback. I don't think he's left to need to make a comeback. Because didn't Netflix pull something out from him? They've they've pushed other projects ahead of what they were working on with him, but they haven't like canceled. So he's not canceled. I don't think so. Okay, I haven't canceled him. I'm. I'm yeah, I don't. I don't see it as. Um, yeah, I don't see it as this career damning I mean, thing he that he too did. Much. He's too and uh, and let's and let's not like forget he. He won Best Actor, his mm-hmm. first one, right? Like, finally. But he's not like, I don't think he's going this way anymore, right? So, so it's not it's, yeah, it's not like he was in the prime of his career anyway. Um, and I know as an actor, your career can be sustained and it can take, you know, you, you he may or he may still be. He may not have reached his peak yet. We don't know. Um, but his, over the last few years, I mean, he wasn't really throwing out like the same quality of movies he was at the beginning of his career when he when he broke out. Like Gemini Man. So, so like Gemini Man. Um, so this this thing that his career is over. It's like, well, no, um, it's not at the height. It's not at at to this point. His career already wasn't at its highest place. Um, but he's still Will Smith. He mm-hmm. still has that draw. So I think, and he's. He's still Will Smith. Um, he's just he's got to lay low for a little bit. But no, I think he'll be fine. I don't think he'll have any problem getting getting roles. It might take a year or two, 
but I think it'd be fine. Okay. What are your thoughts on Jada's response to? She made like a public announcement. Maybe it was on Red Table Talk or one of these platforms. There are so many of them. In terms of like saying that Will shouldn't have slapped him, and she wants him to make peace and um, be cool again. No, I don't even. Is know. that what she said? <sighs> Not verbatim, but like <laughs> okay. So in a I roundabout didn't, way. I, I didn't know what she said. Okay, I'll pull it up. But were Will Smith and Chris Rock even like a thing? They've never, I, have they worked on a project together? No, I heard that there were rumors that he had. Chris had made jokes in the past and the Smiths had told him that they didn't appreciate the jokes that he made. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what my reaction is because I don't know what Jada said. I mean, she, she was I try just, to be better about, I try to be really good about not reacting to things until I know so one who said what and then the context of what they were saying when they well, said Well, I mean she called for healing. I know Vivica Vivica A. Fox made some comments and people were kinda like, Vivica, like who are you? Like you're never gonna be at the caliber of the Smith, so don't hey, Vivica, hey, Vivica Fox was Whatever potential she had, fifty cent crushed that. Um I mean she just talked about healing and peace and let's see. But people were coming for her, like they will. They'll come for her regardless of what she does or doesn't say, um, because she didn't really say that. Like, Will did the right thing by slapping Chris, but she also didn't denounce it either. I don't know. Well, what if she didn't feel that Will did the right thing? Should well, she should she lie in public just to save face for a man? Maybe. I mean, women do it all the time. Men so if have, I had, if I had, if I had, if I had done what Will did, would you just whether you agreed with it or not? What, would you have publicly defended me? I don't know. If that it I, went against what you truly believed, would you? It would. De- I mean, I feel like someone cracking a joke at me doesn't really warrant you slapping them in, on a public stage. I'm not saying it doesn't warrant a slap. But like that's beside the point. Backstage. That's beside the point because the slap happens. Why, okay, so why if I'm asking. you if we are putting ourselves in our situ- in their situation because maybe we'll, we'll get there one day. Um, and you slapped him based off of that because um, I would be shocked. Yes, but what would you say? Would you just say, "Oh, he was protecting my honor" or yeah, whatever I in public, or would you just not say anything because you truly didn't agree with what I did? I think even if I didn't agree with what you did, I think I would publicly acknowledge the intent that I assume went in the act that you did. Yeah. That as my husband, you you are very passionate about protecting my honor, protecting me as an individual, and you take that role seriously. And that's why you took that upon yourself. You felt the need to... You felt that that was the the task you needed to do to honor me. That would probably be as the length. I'd get a PR person to help me word it like that. But I don't know that I'd I think Jada's getting a lot of unfair Oh, she's definitely getting I mean, criticism and flag. But even you even you have been like, oh, I'm gonna rock with Jada. I'm gonna get down with I've Jada. I've never rocked with Jada though. Like yeah. but that's just but a, I don't that's know. more so her performer. Like I'm not a Jada f I don't I'm not a Jada fan. Not because she's done anything to me. I don't really like her acting. I just think that... I think she makes a great supporting actress. But I don't know that she carries things. Um, But I think our society always needs a villain or a villainess. And I think she is the villainess to Will Smith's good boy. Will is great. Everybody loves Will. He crosses dimensions. He, you know, he can be in Bad Boys... And be just the rich kid. He can do this. Like, everyone wants to love Will. So, if you love Will, you got to hate his wife. Like, there are very few couples that people that are both famous and people equally love the husband and the wife. Like, I just think that there's something about the equilibrium of two famous people together. 
at a certain level of fame that people can't handle liking both of them. Jada is a very strong and dominant woman. And I think people also feel a type of way between Jada and Tupac. Like people are just like something, something, something's there. Um, and I think Will is just in a crisis. I don't know if it's a midlife crisis, but I think he's just trying to figure himself out. Uh, but Will is also a grown ass man. Like he's not like a young, young man. He's not 30 something. Will's in his fifties. Like he, I, I know people have put the responsibility and the onus on Jada. Like, Oh, you know, she winked at him and she snapped and she growled and he was like attack. He's a grown ass man with grown ass children. Um, uh, so I don't think they're grown, grown, man. I mean, they can rent cars. Are they really? Yeah. I the think Smith they're kid, all over The Smith eight, kids they are, are, they are in their 20s? They are all over 18. They are all in their 20s. Oh, wow. Willow would be the youngest. Yeah, I think I'm, getting, I'm pretty confident Willow's in her 20s. I'm getting old. Yeah. So I'm not, I, I say that, all, all of that to say, any decision Will makes is his own decision. You can't, like, Jada couldn't command Will to go and slap chris rock so i think people are 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 blaming her for things that are not necessarily in her control i agree but i also think that there's just something about some people are just you hate them or you love them i i've accepted that about society and i think unfortunately jada is one of those people there are lots of other people a lot of other women who are like that i think it's it's harsher on women so like and aisha curry she's like that People just like Aisha or they don't like Aisha. I don't know what she did to people, but that's just how she feels, That how people feel about her. I'm sure she's a sweetheart. She seems like a sweetheart, but for some reason people like her or don't like her. Um, someone was talking about, I was listening to someone talk I, about I, I Megan. Have no I have no issues with Aisha, but I'm, I'm not. But people in love, do in love have, with her either. People do see, like, the, I mean, there's just no, kinda, but I'm saying I don't, I'm not. Because you don't have reason to, but I think, I think with women, Women are. You've told me she's not your type anyway, so. Well, her, me being attracted to her has nothing to do with whether or not I'm. So you're attracted to a her? fan of her? No, I'm saying that doesn't have to be part of the equation. I feel like if you're. But she's actually, you, she actually is an attractive woman. She's a cute girl, yeah. That's what I said. You said attractive. She's, <laughs> she's cute. She's attractive. She's cute to you. No. She's cute. You. <laughs> you make your eyes as big as you want until <laughs> they pop out. I'm telling you, she's an attractive woman. She's cute. Um, okay. Meghan Markle is the same thing where people just either you like her well, that's because or you don't like her. She's the Duchess of. No, she's the former Duchess. Former Duchess of. And all them people over there was hating on her because she well, had like a are, little, little speck of, her too. <laughs> like a little speck of black in her. Go speck. She's half. <laughs> she's her like whole a little mama speck. is black. Yo. I didn't know she was black when I first saw her on suits. I mean, that's. I that's, thought she's had a tan because that's, that's kind of in now. In now, it's always the white, been in. white girls get them tans, and you can't really tell. I, there are lots of racially ambiguous white women that racially I, ambiguous. That's a very that's that's the political mm-hmm. you politically know me. correct I'm way of saying. Stay on that political tan. I remember yeah. I had a coworker um, back back in the day, and. Her found so obviously you know Jasmine. So her foundation color was the same happy color. Happy belated birthday, Jess. Yeah, we sent. I had Savi sing her happy birthday. Sent her a video. Um, her foundation color was the same as this white coworker of mine, and we were like, "Why? How is that? How is that possible?" Um, it's because she she tanned like had a subscription. I don't know if those are still a thing, but um, back in the day, and by back in the day, like 2012, like that's back in the day. It's 10 years ago. Yeah. Oh yeah, it is. Um, I knew I knew white girls who had subscriptions or memberships to tanning beds, and they'd go in there like weekly and just tan and had like the funky goggles. I don't know. Anyway, something about Jada, people just hate on her. Will's a grown man; he made his own decision. I do think that he's gonna have a comeback, and that comeback's gonna be fire. Like okay. I feel there are some scripts that are being held I, for that comeback season. And I, it's just going to be movie, 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 movie. I got to admit, I did not think that we would revisit the Will Smith, Jada thing. I feel like we didn't really revisit it because we're not actually talking about the, the, the incident itself. We're not. Okay. And I don't want to. 
But I we're, think talking we're more about the so fallout. talking, talking yeah, about the fallout. Yeah, the fallout and just how people try to... I know I've always had an issue where people people try to if a man does something and he has a woman in his life they put that on the woman like you need to you know if he had a good woman in his life she wouldn't be do like he wouldn't be doing this blah 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 blah. forgetting that people are their own individuals and they do their own things because there are plenty of men who have good women in their lives and they make bad decisions and there are plenty of men who have bad women in their lives and they make good decisions like the whole, you know me. I'm not a. I'm. I don't know why I'm not a Kim Kardashian fan. I'm just not a Kim Kardashian fan. Actually, I probably know why. I could make a list anyway. But we put all What's of. What's the list? Give me your top three reasons why you're not a Kim K fan. I think she is a cultural appropriator. Uh, she's, you know, used black culture to elevate herself to where she, to get her where she is now. In what way? In terms of her hips, her butt, her like all of her artificial body parts um just overall like things that she's done in terms of she did like a a magazine cover which was replicate was to replicate a black artist from back in the day um it was almost identical so just little little things that she she is known for taking from black culture um that's why I'm not the fan. And I just don't, I don't understand their true, them as a family, their true contribution. Like, I rock with, not Kylie, the other Jenner. See, I, I guess I don't rock with her because I don't know her name. And Kendall. Then, huh? Kendall. Kendall. I kind of rock with Kendall, I think. And then um, Courtney. Kendall's, which was the one that... That oh, did I the don't Pepsi, rock that with Kendall. She commercial. was the Pepsi commercial. I don't. I stopped. That's why I stopped rocking with her. Um, but Courtney, because Courtney's like, I'm white. I'm just gonna have, do. We got a race problem. I'm just gonna do my white thing. We got we a, have Pepsi, a Pepsi problem. We got a Pepsi problem. We ain't I, got enough Pepsi in the world. I like Courtney because Courtney's like, y'all. I'm just gonna do me. I'm not trying to have an artificial anything. So, I, I'm but, hearing a familiarity with the Kardashians, which is interesting because you say you don't really rock with them like that, but you seem to be very up to date with what they're going through they're everywhere they're not they're I mean, really not they're, they I, are. You, i have no You're idea just not in any circles um <laughs> maybe that's a good thing because i wouldn't i wouldn't circles, find myself being angry at people for no reason you were in circles you would no know reason. what the kardashians are doing but i rock with courtney because she's I'm not, not in, like I'm not she, in circles, doesn't, she doesn't I'm, seem like i must she's be trying. i must be square back to my initial point okay. why the kardashians are in this conversation when when kanye started doing crazy stuff it was all put on Kim. Like, Kim is the reason why Kim is doing this. And that's why, you know, he should have been with a black woman. I mean, you know, he should have been with a black woman because he wanted to be with a black woman. Not because a black woman is, like, that's the misuse of trust black women. Like, we are not fixers. We are not, you know, the equalizer that we're going to come in and make everything good. The cleanup crew. I don't like that misrepresentation of black women. But... Every, every time Kanye did something crazy before they got divorced, it was always like, well, if Kim was good, if Kim was a good wife, if Kim was black, she would do like all. Of, and it's unnecessary because, again, Kanye is a grown man making his own decisions, but his decisions become a reflection of her. And I don't think that it's fair to put that on her because like she's just doing her billion dollar thing. So, I mean, that's an example. There are just some women that, you know, they're damned if they do, damned if they don't. Uh, and I think she's in that situation. I also feel for her because Connie's been doing some wild stuff. And I mean, she, I mean, there are people who are just going to hate. Like yeah, you said, I mean, that's really just really how hard. our society is designed. She don't, she don't make it easy. Remember that thing she said about nobody wants to work? Get your freaking asses up and work. She did say that. She did. And she didn't say freaking either. I cleaned that up because I've, I have a feeling I've been cussing a lot on these podcasts lately. So maybe it's a sign of what I've been going, maybe I'm going through something. So rather than having, rather than having, rather than having emotional affairs, I just cuss, (laughs) which is probably a better alternative. Um, I mean, for your livelihood, if you're trying to live, I'm not even worried about that. I'm not, I'm not savvy enough to, to cheat, I might as well just like Everyone once I do it. That. No, I'm, I'm really not. Well, one, I don't know. It's been so long um, since I've had to uh, like try to pick somebody up 
that I don't know. I would probably stumble through it. That's not really how affairs happen, though. Well, no, I know they they tend to happen in more so innocently, and then you yeah. kind of you kind of like, oh, I'm in this, and then you have that moment where you got to decide: do I continue this or do I stop? Mm-hmm. And then people be like, no, I'm gonna keep doing it. But um, even even that, because I don't pick up cu- I don't pick up cues, which is why you could be halfway in an affair before nah. you realize. No, nah, I wouldn't. Affair. I wouldn't do that. Um, uh, no, I wouldn't do that. You, you, I'm not saying you would have an affair, but I feel like it's so easy for people to be like, I could never, I would never. No, I, just, I'm not it's saying all about timing. Like no, 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 no. good people have affairs. So you're, you're misunderstanding me. I'm not saying I don't think I could ever want to. My thing is, is I don't know that I would be good at. It. I don't know that I'd be successful. If it's something you want to do, you because there was you a, force I, yourself to be successful. I had, no, because there, there was a time was, you wanted to have an affair. Yeah, not with you. <laughs> of course. Um, but there was I was with someone and was not happy. And this is gonna be this is real controversial because I've only really if you go through my like timeline of my life, I've only had like a handful of like relationships. Mm-hmm. But um I was actively in my mind, I was like, Oh, I think I'm gonna <laughs> I, said, I think I'm gonna cheat. <laughs> no, you weren't. David. But I sucked at it. So it was like, nah, let me just stay miserable. <laughs> just stay miserable. <laughs> Good boy, David. Actively uh, thought that. Yeah. Wow. Man, I got layers, yo. I got layers on layers. Wow. Always acting like he's just like this sweet. I only do good things. The worst I do is cuss on my podcast. Um I mean for So the, you're just lazy. No, for the most part, I mean that's true, because I'm you know, like uh, the, so thing, the, the thing that went around about Russell Wilson, um, dude on the podcast called him a square and like everybody was all up in arms. Like I'm, I'm a square. So that's kind of why I don't really find myself in a lot of these predicaments. Um, most of my predicaments come from like middle school and <laughs> high school when I was just young and dumb. But as an adult, you know, it's just, I don't want really to get into a lot of stuff, but no, I, there was, I was, was looking to uh to step out to uh test the waters My mom's gonna be so disappointed in you. nah because <laughs> nah. she'll never know she'll never know who it was nobody ever know who it was um we have we have covered some terror we've covered some ground with this one we have um but we're what at did our you, what did you come to the episode with because clearly I came with infidelity. Uh, I came with I came with myself. <laughs> you had no content, nothing to drop. I mean, I could always I could always tell like a story or something. But you didn't have an, enough no topics that said DL and Monique. You know, it was so funny when that happened. Um, it was one of those things, kind of like the slap, where it was just everywhere, and I was already. T- I, I was, didn't see it. I was just tired of it. I didn't see. Like, if you hadn't mentioned it think, to me, I wouldn't have known to go and, and look it up. And I think because it involved Monique. It was just like, oh, okay, I, I've seen this story before. <laughs> like Monique is beefing with somebody, and that's not that's not an indictment or or uh, an opinion on Monique one way or the other. But it's just a fact. Like she's mm-hmm. when she's in the news, it's usually because she's at odds with somebody. So it was like somebody probably said something, or there was a misunderstanding. And what it was is, that from what I can tell, is there the whoever the promoter the promoter was was shady, either shady or just messed up um, and didn't. Um, didn't own up to it, at least not in time. Um, and then that caused, you know, Monique and DL to go with it. But by the time, yo, but she got time, dirty. And I haven't looked into it because it's just been everywhere. She came for his wife and was like, "You should be ashamed for sucking his dick." <laughs> and it was like, "Your fight is not with her. She has nothing to do with this." You're, if you, one, your fight isn't with DL. Why would she? And that's why people are like really upset because they're like, Monique, you crossed the line. So I'm, 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 cur- I'm curious, right? Like, so, um, and I, hopefully Georgia listens to this episode oh, no. because she and I had a really, really good conversation I know, in Vegas. I got pictures of it. Um, and it's so funny because someone who wasn't actually in that conversation would think that we were at odds, and I think we really they ag- looked like they were fighting. They we were really, straight we really agree. I think. Just agreed like for the most part, and she actually gave me some perspective that I that I didn't. She's really good at that, that. I didn't have. I still have your perspective. I still have mine, sure. But uh, I one thing I try to do is have space to at least hear out other people's perspective because we're all coming at life from different 
different point, different angles. Um, and I don't want to, I don't want to say what the argument was because one, I don't want to speak for her because she's more than capable of speaking for herself and she's not here to do that. So I won't try to, uh, I won't give a watered down version of it because I just wouldn't do it justice because she, she described it so eloquently. And there's a good portion of that. I just feel like she'd be between us. But, um, uh, a topic that was, that came up was that, um, traditionally on the internet, Twitter, uh, in the media, whatever, black men don't defend black women. Truth. And uh, what's what's the chick's name on? This got the talk show on Showtime. Z. Oh. You know what I'm talking about? She had Charlemagne on. Um, and she. Am I thinking of the right show? Maybe, maybe not. But um, Zulu, Zayla, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and she brought up a history of him um, oh, disparaging black women and trying to tear them down. And Monique was one of the ones that came up. So my question is, seeing as how you just said Monique just out of nowhere came for DL's wife, are we allowed to critique her or should she still be like, is she, is she still a, a victim and all this and should she be defended? And is she, is, is she just reacting because she has been wronged? So therefore we shouldn't be able to criticize because I, I feel like, um, like with Monique, a lot of the criticism with her has been, f- could be, you could argue has been fair. Okay. Uh, but some, I mean, there's always going to be outlandish mm-hmm. stuff, but I feel like a lot of it's just fair. Um, one of the, you know, and I know she got an apology from Lee Daniels. Um, and people tried to act like that just meant everything that she ever said about anything about anyone who had ever wronged her was automatically true. And I'm like, well, that doesn't necessarily make sense. It's just Lee saying, I'm sorry, let's bury the hatchet. Um, so I'm just curious, like, as a black woman, mm-hmm. I mean, is how is Monique behaving? Is, 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 is it reprehensible? Like, I, how how should we feel about her and this is a some from someone who has not looked into the the situation the of it. Okay. and you i assume you have yeah i've had but to talking have. coming uh, you know off off the rip talking about someone like you shouldn't be sucking his as a, like i i don't know why you would involve his wife in in your dispute with him so that's my that's my biggest qualm with the whole thing so I, think I think that's indefensible when it comes to like you know let's say all fairs love and war all that stuff but this is neither love nor war like this isn't i guess it is war but they were battling each other and they had no reason to be fighting with each other um this is this was a this was a level above them this was a contract level this was these are people outside of the two of them um dl Obviously, one to be headliner was headliner. Monique was also headliner. Her feelings were hurt. His feelings were hurt. DL's wife literally had nothing to do with this. Right. Um, and what they do in their marriage bed. So, is, should we defend Monique? Yes or no? We should defend Monique in the context of. Actually, no. We shouldn't defend anybody. Okay. We should. We should defend. defend should defend. No we one. should defend DL's wife. DL's she's wife. really the that's only black, one. She's a black woman. Right? She's a black woman. It has nothing to do with the black woman. This. It really just has to do with the fact that she has legitimately nothing to do with this fight. So even if DL was married to Kim Kardashian, you'd be cool with. You'd no, still I'd say the same like, thing. <laughs> DL wouldn't have gotten on that stage and said that stuff if he was married to a black woman. No, I'm kidding. I'm absolutely kidding. No color aside, it don't matter because I don't know DL's wife from the next woman. But yeah. she, to me, she's the only person who needs de- defending. I, I've never seen her. She could be white, Asian, Latina. Doesn't matter to me. Like, Monique had no business saying that about her, saying that of her. They're married. She could do whatever she wants with his business, with her mouth, whatever. Like, the marriage bed is undefiled. It's in the book. Um, so, like, slut shaming somebody's wife that that wasn't cool to me uh, from monique's perspective i think she was picking her battles with the wrong person i know for a fact monique has been through some stuff so dl was wrong for saying that precious <laughs> he was really wrong for saying that precious was an autobiography um oh, he said that he said that, <laughs> he said that. Wow. um and she's been through some stuff so that like that wasn't cool in my opinion uh but again it, you know the most probably the most 
what the most fascinating thing about Monique is to me. The Parkers? No. No, about her. Like, her uh, her personality. Like, just the most fascinating thing about her. Like, yeah. what it is. Her weight loss? The fact that she calls her husband daddy. Yeah, that makes me that uncomfortable. Is, when you get to a place in your love, in your relationship, that you have absolutely no reservations about calling your significant other that kind of pet name in public. But daddy's not a pet name. Daddy's a title for... I mean, pet name, title, whatever. But... Yeah, like, she called him daddy. Like, I just... Because I watched the, the Breakfast Club uh, interview. And that's why the other day in the garage. Her, seriously. Um, and he's her manager. She was, yeah, she was like, Daddy, would you like to take that question? I'm like, her dad's on the... Why is her dad on the... Like, I was so confused. And then I was like, he's not older. Because I didn't, I didn't know. Like, there was a, I learned a lot from that interview. Um, I'm like, he's not old enough to be her dad. And then Envy was like, oh, you know, on the phone, that's Sydney, that's Monique's husband. I'm like, she calls her husband daddy? I'm like, oh. Ain't nobody, no. That's cool. Is it? I mean, it kind of is. I mean, I... I don't know. I like I just I think it's cool that they're at that place where they're one hundred percent comfortable and don't care give a hoot about but what I anybody says what about that's it. That's rooted in like it's rooted in the fact that she called him daddy. Does he did he request to be called daddy? Does it don't she matter. Take that it's undefiled. Herself? Is it male chauvinistic? <laughs> Is it like she has fought paternal issues and that's why she wants to that's why she refers to him as daddy is it more so he feel because like i i I don't i don't i don't think there's a lot that goes into men wanting to be called daddy i don't think it's in terms of like power and just psychological look pimpness like it don't it don't matter because that's that's what they do that's for them she won't call him daddy he wants to receive it then that's that's what it is okay it was it, it caught me off guard. I was it took me I had to sit with it for a minute and I was like, Oh. Okay. The only time I've heard cool. that and I was able to be okay with it was someone we knew said that their kids were referring to the father by his first name because she was calling him by his first name because that's his name. So she started referring to him as daddy so that the kids would know to call him dad mm. rather than calling him by his name. Yeah. Even so. I mean, I call you, I, it's so funny. I remember one time on Facebook, uh, you know, we were doing, doing what we do and uh, I referred to you as bruh and somebody, it was, I guess what the equivalent of what a subtweet would be on, uh, on Twitter. Uh, this dude had put out a post on uh, like, not five minutes later, uh, it said, well, I don't know how dudes can call a, <laughs> the irony of it is, I, he said, I don't know how dudes can call a female, uh, bruh, uh, don't you, like, dude, don't you see that's a woman sitting right in front of you? <laughs> so, I mean, like, I, I get it, like, you people get into these relationships, and, you know, you develop, you know, a, a, a vibe, and you call it, you you have different aspects of that relationship and you call each other well, things. I, I guess because I call you girl. Like when I got tea, I'll be like, girl. Like, girl. And you say it right back. I'm like, girl. And Solace calls you bruh. Well, Solace is calling me. Like, although we're working on that one. Like, like, like it's not, it's down. not okay. But she, she called me bruh the other day too. Yeah, and I'll say, bruh. I'll say yo. And I, you know, it's just, it's just what we do. So I, you know, what people do in their relationships, so long as nobody's being. Um, harmed, yeah. You know that's that's for them. But I thought I thought it was very interesting that she called day, him that she calls her for husband, daddy. At the so, end of the day, she came for the wrong person. So seeing as they all came seeing for as, each, I'm not calling. Seeing them. as Father's Day is Sunday, <laughs> I'll refer to you as your father. Well, when you I'm can keep all children. all the gifts, all the food, all the meals. I just need you to call me daddy. Why, your daddy Dave? Why, why? <laughs> if you can explain to me. Uh, what do you gain? All right, our thirty-seven minutes. I think that's a good spot to uh, to close. So, um, this will be a Friday drop, um, because we're busy, and 
I think our drops are going to float between Wednesday and Friday. I told y'all, I don't have that stamina like I did last year when we did 49 Wednesdays in a row. Um, I ain't, I'm not that, I'm not that guy. So, uh, we will be back next week. That'll be our, I guess that'll be our Juneteenth. No, Juneteenth will record. Well, Mm, it might be because next Sunday will be the 19th, which is when Juneteenth is. So yeah, maybe, but it won't be, Mm -hmm. this will drop this week. So we'll also have episode before. So we have the one episode. We'll have episode in between. Then the episode after that will be Juneteenth. So, um, and then I think our goal is going to be to try to get our first guest, be it here physically or if we get them on a on a Zoom. So uh, be on be on the lookout for that high profile, really high profile, especially when you consider when you think of Charlotte. Like, I'm just so excited. So, um, and it's all thanks to you because your 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 network your network is truly your net worth and you are a wealthy woman you understand me because you know some people uh yeah so um just again pride month representation matters happy black month happy black black, black day because every day is the black <laughs> black i'm just gonna say it because i say it's probably not right but i, I um, say the gays so i'm gonna say the blacks that's crazy um, is it or is that just your no, typical I, male? I just state? think it's I just think it's I just think it's crazy. To say the blacks? Yeah. Uh my I can say the blacks. <laughs> my shirt is from uh Be the People on Instagram. So again oh, did I ever confirm making this uh this pledge to buy our gear on the podcast from black owned uh direct consumer brands and then giving them a shout. So no sponsors, no ads or nothing. We're just what giving we're just showing love and giving love. It says district of the district clothing of district of clothing yes that's what it is that's what i was saying dc because i was thinking district of columbia district of clothing there it is clothing so um that's this week's threads and uh we'll drop last week's uh last week's threads should have dropped on instagram before we drop this episode so uh if anybody wants to go and check those brands out uh please please do so so uh, you know what to do. YouTube, like, subscribe, uh, Instagram, Facebook. We're there too. And don't forget to show us love on Apple, and Spotify, and Google, and all those other podcast platforms. Anything else? When in doubt, trust black women. Trust the black. Trust the black women. All right. All right. That's it for this week. We out of here. We love y'all. Peace. Be good. Be safe. Yeah. None but some grow pains. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I done came way too far, can't stop me now I done came way too far, can't stop me now I done came way too far, can't stop me now I done came way too far, can't stop me now Stop me now